Alan Bergstein fighting to win liberals over in South Florida. Now, people would think that what with the uh, the election, uh, you've had uh, Mission Impossible. You, you've had a, a, a Republican elected governor, senator, and senator. Rick Scott is senator. Ron DeSantis is governor. And what about the South Florida, Broward, Palm Beach, Dade County regions? Heavily Democrat, represented by Democrats in the county commissions, the city mayor's offices, uh, the uh, sheriff of Broward County, the sheriff of Palm Beach County, the vital offices in Miami, Dade, Broward, and Palm Beach County are owned lock, stock, and barrel by the Democrats. It is northern Florida, above Palm Beach, Florida, that a, a reality takes effect. And that, is that what balances out the state? Absolutely. Without northern Florida, Florida's 29 electoral votes would go to the Democrats. We would have had Hillary Clinton in office, and the country would have been on a spiral downfall. Why do you say that? Spiral downfall. Uh, because Democrats have lost sight of the Constitution. The Democrats have lost sight of reality. You have uh, the leaders of the Democrat Party the old white men and the old white women being tossed out. You have Ocasio-Cortez from New York. You have Ilhan Omar from uh, uh, Minnesota. Minnesota. And you have Rashida Tlaib from uh, Michigan? Uh, Michigan. So you have a whole new breed of Democrats. The party is, the old line Democrats are wiped out. The Kennedy party is, is, is way back in the Pleistocene area. The Democrat, the, the Kennedy Democrat way back. It's but, gone. But some argue that it's only three or four of these neo-democratic socialists and the rest of the party, including the, uh, the, the traditional Israel supporters like Ted Deutsch, are still the dominant uh, worthwhile donation for Democrat donors. See, you're speaking the mantra of, of the Democrats, which, which is basically, I hate to say it, I like it very much, it's a lie. Uh, you have uh, the Practically every single Democrat candidate for president today follows Ocasio-Cortez's green line. You know, the new Green Deal. You mean even uh, Speaker Pelosi? Absolutely, Speaker. Absolutely, Speaker Pelosi does. She hasn't discounted it. She hasn't said, I'm against it. The Democrats are supporting these, the new wave. They're political. This is the new wave. You have the millennials now. You have the high school students who are put out into the street marching now for gun control. They're marching for abortion. The Democrats have now overwhelmed the uh, high school students, using them as their frontline shock troops. You have the so you mean Parkland, Parkland high school kids were immediately pulled out of class, marching for gun control in Tallahassee. And not only in Tallahassee, they went around the country. None of them chastised. Uh, uh, Scott Israel, the 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 uh, sheriff. Mm -hmm. None of them chastised the school board superintendent for having permitted Cruz to go on with his education, although he was Nicholas a thug. Cruz. The, Nicholas the, Cruz, the, the shooter. Yeah. The shooter. Robert Runcie, the school board superintendent, who came from Chicago as a gift from uh, sh Chicago and Obama to Broward County. Uh, did away with basically uh, behavioral, all sorts of behavioral incentives for the school system. The kids ran amok, and that's why you have uh, Cruz. And then you mentioned something, I, I just like to say that it's not true. Ted Cruz is, is, is not an Israel supporter. No, no, he, Ted, Ted Deutsch? Ted Deutsch, rather, I'm sorry. <laughs> Ted okay. Deutsch is, is. Ted Cruz is an Israel supporter, yeah. senator from De but, Dallas. Uh, Ted Deutsch is not necessarily an Israel supporter. He never went against Obama when o Obama ridiculed uh, Netanyahu. He never went against Obama with the Iran deal. He is now a, a firm supporter of the Iran deal. What Ted Deutsch says to the people in his community, to his constituents, is different from what he espouses. When Omar basically came out with a vitriolic Jew-hating statement such, he said that the Jews control the United States, that Israel is a terrorist country, Ted Deutsch uh, was vehemently against it, but when he spoke in Congress for five minutes on the floor of the House, he never mentioned her name. And the resolution that was introduced in Congress was not 
to, to denounce anti-Semitism. It was to denounce hatred against Muslims, gays, uh, midgets, and, and Jews. They were all lumped into one thing. But Omar still is running absolutely emboldened, and she strengthened. And the Democrat Party, by not doing anything to her, has emboldened her. And now the new candidates see where the road is is being paid for them, and they're going to go along with her. It's my, it's my premonition that the Democrat platform in 2020 will be anti-Israel. In 2020, the next 2020 year will be will be anti-Israel, an anti-Israel platform. It and will not be pro-Israel. That's the uh, the campaign, the election platform. But what about the sentiment within the neo-Democrat, this new Democrat, uh, or the progressive uh, House dominant party or, the, regarding Israel and her supporters? They're anti-Israel, totally anti-Israel. They didn't condemn Omar. They didn't support Netanyahu when, when he when he won the election recently. They did not send a congratulatory message to him. Uh, they are a, take a look at what Trump did. Trump did away with funding for UNRWA, which supported terrorism in Palestine. Trump kicked out the Palestinian embassy in Washington, D.C., which the Democrats under Barack Obama initiated. No, there was a Palestinian delegation in an embassy in Washington, D.C. Trump kicked them out. Trump did away with funding the Palestinians. Uh, whereby they took $120 million a year and gave it to the families of the uh, terrorists who somehow were killed or locked up by the Israelis. This was the Democrats. Trump has done away with all support of the Palestinian terrorists. He has condemned Iran for their Jew-hating. The Democrats loved Iran. In fact, today, Deutsch and Schumer, Debbie Wasserman Schultz, are pro the reinstating the Iran deal that Obama uh, did. Overtly, the Democrats are now lined up with the Ocasio-Cortezes, uh, the Omars, and the Tlaibs, and the Keith Ellison, who is now the Attorney General in the state of Minnesota. Could you imagine the top law enforcement officer in Minnesota is a rabid, Quran-believing Islamist who is supporter of the Council on American Islamic Relations, he was Louis Farrakhan's man for the Nation of Islam in Minnesota. He was elected to be the head law enforcement officer in Minnesota. So where is the trend in the Democrat Party going? Look at the trend. Where is the trend? Uh, even uh, former Vice President Joe Biden campaigns on the notion that he's more progressive than anyone. He's finished. He's, de he's dead. And he's an old white man. He even condemned himself for being a white man. Now it's traditional for every top Democrat politician who's white to bemoan the fact that he was white. Like Beto O'Rourke? Beto O'Rourke. This guy is pure Irish. What's his name? Robert Francis O'Rourke. Uh -huh. And he took a Spanish nickname. Uh -huh. it's, it's, it's like me saying, my name is Jose Bergstein. <laughs> People would laugh at me. But he's called Beto O'Rourke by the media. They love him. And he knows where the votes are, the Democrat votes are. And it's anti-Israel, anti-democracy, and anti-Christian. Do you remember when uh, Kavanaugh was being uh, uh, vetted? Uh, interviewed, uh -huh. vetted for the, the Supreme confirmation Court? confirmation hearings. Yeah, the confirmation hearings. Okay. And do you remember what Kamala Harris said to him? What did she say? Do you feel qualified to be a Supreme Court justice? although you're a member of the Knights of Columbus? In other words, because he was a Catholic, she uh, member basically... Of member of a, a civic fraternal as, uh, association. A civic, a, a Catholic organization, the Knights of Columbus. She said, basically, uh, do you feel qualified to be Supreme Court Justice, even though you're a member of the Knights of Columbus? Do you uh -huh. remember the Covington, Kentucky boys? Yes. Do you remember what happened to them? What happened to them? You know, when they stood their ground in Washington, D.C. Right, when the, when the leftists came and danced Indian dances in their face. The, excuse me, the Native American guy. Remember the Native American guy? Yeah. He came up to them with his drum, the banged drum in his face, to intimidate them to say something nasty because the cameras were on them. 
and the Covington, Kentucky guys just just stay there without rebuking this Native American, without condemning him, without cursing him. Yeah. And this one guy, I can't think of his name, uh-huh. stood up with the hat. Yeah. He was condemned by the nation, by the media. By America. Yeah. Well, by, well, by the, the, the press. Yeah, for, for, being, uh, for outraging Native Americans. He had the nerve to stand there and smile. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't a smile, it was a smirk. Uh-huh. So, See? But what does that mean? That it, it, he's Christian. He's Christian. And he was, up th- he was in Washington, D.C. To, count, to, to counter-demonstrate against abortion rights advocates. And they demeaned him because he was Christian. They would never have done that to black school children who stood their ground. They would say, look how brave these black school children were. They stood up to these demagogues, these right-wing uh, crazy guys. But these, these white guys from Covington, Kentucky, these Catholic boys from a Catholic school, they smirked. And they ridiculed this Native American, which is absolutely outrageous because that was only a five-second shot. They didn't show the whole uh, scenario of that thing. Mm-hmm. Have you been voting a liberal your whole life? Uh, Dem- uh, have you been ho- voting Republican your whole life? No. I was born a Jewish umbilical cord Democrat. I was born into a, a socialist family in Brooklyn. My father was a waiter. My father was a member of the union. I was a union member at 11. I was washing dishes in the basement of the, Wo- of the uh, uh, Woolworth building. But as, as I grew old and matured and put on weight, I also put on some, some brain power. And I changed. I said, this is best for me. Capitalism, not socialism. Being for democracy rather than for totalitarianism. In the 1930s, the Democrat Party was totally pro-Soviet Union. They love the five-year plans under Joseph Stalin, the Democrat Party. And they still are. Look at Bernie Sanders. He spent his honeymoon in Russia. But yet the guy happens to be a multimillionaire. He just bought an $850,000 cottage, and he's espousing socialism. But surely, uh, did you study the humanities? Did you practice the humanities? Unfortunately, in Brooklyn College, they taught me basically what is now social justice. Social justice means that if I'm successful and I'm white, I should be embarrassed and ashamed. Well, it wasn't that way at that time, though. Well, this, this, that was the embryo of today's social justice program. In other words, uh, look at the low-income housing projects. They were supposed to be the salvation of the poor. Now they're just bastions of, of crime and hate and depravity. Go into any uh, low-income housing project in Brooklyn or Manhattan, and you'll see not people striving. You'll see people just living uh, from one year to the next. Mm-hmm. Were, uh, were you in education in your uh, working days? Yeah. I started out as a school teacher. I became a principal in the South Bronx. I spent 20 years in the South Bronx with all black children, black and Hispanic children. And uh, I, I've lived, not lived among them. I worked among them. And, uh, and you I, he- did you help them? Absolutely. Absolutely. You Absolutely. dedicate your, your professional uh, uh, vocation really to, uh, to working within to uplift the black yeah, community? Yeah, I, I never changed my position from uh, the South Bronx. I could have gone to Queens with my seniority or to Brooklyn to white areas. I stuck it, stuck it out in the Bronx. And I love these kids. I love, in fact, I used to say to them that I give them more credit than my own kids. My own kids could ride their bikes to school. My kids could play in the streets. These kids in, in the South Bronx could not walk down the stairs by themselves. The girls would be raped walking down the stairs. They couldn't go to the store with money because they'd be jumped and the money would be robbed from them. So they, having survived in this neighborhood in the South Bronx, or be it South Brooklyn or what have you, I, I give them credit. And some of them, unfortunately, didn't survive. Do you attribute um, the failures in the uh, uh, educational systems to liberal policies? Absolutely. Absolutely. In what way? Well, uh, for instance, I went to Stuyvesant High School. I was honored to be accepted into Stuyvesant High School. Which is a special school in the New York uh, High School system. It's an elite school. It's a public high school together with Brooklyn Tech and Bronx High School of Science. It was a school that you could get in only through the recommendation of your teachers, your principal, and then you had to pass a written test. So when I took that test, they didn't know if I was white, green, or brown. They just went by the virtues of the exam. T- 
Today, Mayor de Blasio has done away with, starting next year, done away with these three high schools. They will be basically open to most students in New York City. And of course, if not, not enough blacks are selected for the school, it will be deemed a, a racist school. Well, <clears throat> what are the liberal policies doing to benefit or harm uh, the social, uh, the society I here in South Florida? Well, the policies in South Florida, as I'm concerned, uh, as um, given to 